Okay, in this section we're going to talk about the derivatives of trig functions. So I want to derive one of them for you. I want to derive the, the derivative of sine x. So we want to find f prime of x, the derivative of sine x, but we're going to do that using the limit process. Limit process, we did that before in a previous section. This is the formula that you would apply is this one here. So we're going to plug in the information based on our function that we have. f of x plus h means that we're going to put x plus h in there in place of x. So we have sine of x plus h and then that's going to be minus our original function which is going to be sine x. Now next what we want to do is we need to find a way to algebraically simplify this because if I put a zero in there directly I'm dividing by zero nothing more I can do there. So what I need to do is break this up. So I need to simplify the sine x over sine x plus h and I can do that by using the sum and difference formulas that's from uh, trig. So we're going to use a sum formula in order to break that up into single angles. So here's what it'll look like when you apply it. We're going to use sine of x plus h uh, is what I refer to it in my trig videos. So x plus h instead we're going to do sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h and then minus sine x all over h. So the first two pieces got broken up into that sine cosine plus cosine sine and we have minus sine over there in the end. Next what I need to do is look for things that I can do some factoring with. So I have a sine x over here and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this term next to this one because I notice that there's a common factor of sine x that's in there. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do limit h goes to zero and then we're going to switch the terms around. So I'm going to do cosine x sine h and I'm going to do plus sine x cosine h minus sine x. I'm going to do all that. All that's going to be over h. Now this has a like term so I can factor out a sine from that one. Okay, so I'm going to do cosine x sine h and I'm going to pull out a sine x and that's going to leave us with cosine h minus 1, all that's over h. Okay, so I've gone all the way down here as far as I can go in terms of factoring so at this point what I need to do is I have to, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to split this up into diff two different fractions. And the only reason why I'm choosing to do this, so I'm going to do actually two different fractions, cosine x sine h over h, and then I'm going to do sine x cosine h minus 1, divide that one by h also. Now the reason why I'm choosing to do that is because I'm, I'm looking for special limits that I can apply here. In the limits section that we talked about there's two special limits that we have with cosine and sine. One of them is the limit as h goes to zero of sine h over h. That's going to go to one. That was a limit from a previous section. Another one is if I have one minus cosine h over h that limit's going to go to zero. So we're going to apply the special limits uh, to each of those. So I'm going to break each of these up into two other fractions. So I'm going to do cosine x over 1 and then sine h over h here. Again, why am I doing that? Because I'm looking for the special limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h. I can apply that and that's going to turn into a 1. This other one over here, I'm also going to do the same thing. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going, I need to switch the order around to that because that limit only works if you have 1 minus cosine h over h. So what I'll do is I'm going to put a minus sign here and I'm going to do sine x times 1 minus cosine h uh, over h. Okay so again I, I plot a minus sign. The minus sign would switch the order. If I factor out a minus sign from this I would get a negative cosine h and then a plus 1 that would switch the order around so that's why I'm going to make that a minus. The last thing I'll do is I'll uh, separate this one like I did the first fraction so I'm going to do Limit h goes to 0 of cosine x over 1 times sine h over h. 
and this one we're going to do sine x over 1 and then I have 1 minus cosine h over h. Okay, so now I have it broken up as far as, I, uh, as, far as possible. I'm going to apply this special limit to each of these. For the first one here, I'm going to have, as h goes to 0, that's not going to change the first term because I don't have any H's to put, or any H's to fill in with zero there. So because of that, I'll just this will be left with cosine x, and then times one because that's the limit sine h over h. If these are the same, that's going to go to one. For the other part over here, sine x is not going to change, but this part here, that part's going to go to zero. The limit as h goes to zero of one minus cosine h over h that goes to zero, which means that's going to knock out that last term. The final answer is going to be cosine x. So from this we can see that the derivative of sine x is going to be uh, cosine x. So uh, with that we can now generalize and I'll do that next and I'll show you a couple trig limits and again the, if you were to change, put this into cosine x instead of sine x go through all the same process with limit process it would work exactly the same way. So now let's go ahead and write the conclusion for this. Okay, so here's our conclusions. We just went through the whole limit process. We found out that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. If we would have done the same limit process starting with cosine x, then we would have gotten negative sine x as our answer. So here's our two derivatives for sine and cosine. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now later in this section, we're going to talk about the derivatives of the other four trig functions.